Hi everyone and welcome back to Circle of Grace. And for those of you who this is your first time signing on to this channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I also welcome back those of you, my uh, family and friends who are regulars. God bless you. Um, our hope is that in this atmosphere you'll be edified and strengthened to wholeness and health as we journey together and support each other to purpose and destiny. So today we've, we've been talking, from the last post we've been talking about authenticity, becoming your authentic self, and I want to continue in that vein, but I want to title the next couple posts, Why I Walked Away, and today we'll be talk, focusing on fear. So it's why I walked away, and specifically fear. Fear is a God-given emotion that alerts us to danger, but there is also the spirit of fear that God didn't give us. So where did it come from? And that is what we'll be talking about today and also how to overcome it. Second Timothy 1, 7 says, but God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. If God didn't give us a spirit of fear, it had to come from the devil because he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and tormenting people with the spirit of fear help him, helps him to accomplish that. So how do we get the spirit of fear? Wow. It comes upon us through trauma and by inheritance, and some people are even taught to fear. And I fall into that category because I was never a fearful child, but I was taught to fear, and it wasn't something that I was... Um, intentionally taught it just came to me by association and being an environment where fear was a normal thing first John 4 18 to 20 said there is no fear in love but perfect love casted out fear because fear is torment all love is made perfect when we fellowship with God for those of you who know God and for those of you who don't know God I pray that before this uh, this session is over that you would acknowledge that he is Lord, that you would denounce your, your life of sin, and that you would uh, dedicate your life to him. God is love, and his love is shed abroad in our hearts, therefore driving away fear. All love for God causes us to trust in him in every situation, and where there is love, there is no room for torment. And some of the outworkings of fear are hesitation, where we live double-minded, you know, we're not sure. Uh, even though we have everything uh, in front of us saying, you know what, this is a good move, we still go back and forth. Uh, we suffer from imposter syndrome where we talk ourselves out of things, even though we know we are capable of doing uh, certain things. And then we have anxiety, and that's a big one. And there are some people who get so anxious that they have to go on medication, you know, and, uh, and that causes worry and stress and being overly concerned. And of course, torment, which is you don't have no peace. Um, disease and sickness, that comes from having a spirit of fear as well. Because you worry yourself to death, like they say. Um, anger is an outworking of fear as well. Some people, when they become fearful, instead of running or fighting, they become very, very angry. In a situation where anger is so inappropriate, you know. Um, and then we have irrational behavior. Another writer says, and I want us to listen to this, pay attention to this, fear can become a prison. There are some people who are afraid to go outside. I forgot there's a long word for that. And so they are prison of their own environment. Fear makes you lose your focus. I know what that is like. Fear makes you listen to outside influences. Fear creates obstacles. Fear can keep you from facing the battle. Fear causes doubt and fear makes you forget God's truth. And I can identify with all of these. And so here is my story. So as a young girl, we would travel because, you know, even though my parents were strict at a certain age, after I made seven and I was actively um, singing on concerts and stuff like that, I got to travel with my father um, and the regenerated singers and then we would have like family trips and outings and stuff like that I would be the child because I'm curious in nature I would be the child who would run ahead 
and look at this and look at that and they would always have to rein me back in right <laughs> I'm still like that um, so I really did not have fair fair was not a part of my daily um, life but over time I became fearful right listen to this so at the age of 16 I wanted to go to U UBI the University of the Virgin Islands to go to college um, my parents said no I was too young uh, and then I sat at played out with my other siblings as well except for my brother who got to go to the States to go to school um, I knew from very young, don't ask me where I got it from, I knew from very young that I did not want to live in the Caribbean. And that, not that there was anything wrong with the Caribbean, it's just that I knew because of what I, I wanted to do, what my desires were, they could only be fulfilled if I lived in the United States of America. So I conditioned my mind from very early to live abroad. Um, fast forward a couple of years, I did not get to go to UBI, but then eventually we moved to the USBI. And at a point where I should have taken my independence and say, you know what, this is what I want to do. What did I do? I got married. Because in my mind, that was the only way to establish my independence. And I saw that played out for my other siblings as well. And that to me, although there are some persons who can marry young because God ordained for them to do that, there are some of us who need to explore. There are some of us who need to go far and wide to see how far we would go in terms of our talent and our giftings. Um, and so I was one of those who got married. And when I look back on it and look back at some of the issues that I've had, personal issues that I've had, I see that it stemmed from me getting married at the time when I did and so I have had to deal with the spirit of fear but most recently um, I had a conversation with my sister and I saw how far reaching the spirit of fear it can reach into generations and try to destroy the lives of people who have great potential and so I am to the point that's why I am talking to you right now I am to the point where um, I, you know, I told her, this is something that we have to break. This is something that we have to resist. This is something that we have to come against. And um, she agreed with me because it is debilitating. It is paralyzing. It is crippling the spirit of fear. So how do we deal with the spirit of fear? We cast it out. We resist it. We, re we denounce it. Um, because the Bible says in Job 3.25, for the thing greatly fed is come upon me and that which I was afraid of is come unto me and so I want to lead us today quickly for those of you who are struggling with the spirit of fear I want to lead you in a short prayer repeat after me I stand against the spirit of fear that is trying to operate in my life in the name of Jesus I reject every evil report infirmity divorce loss of job or loss of family member that is trying to bring fear into my life I destroyed in Jesus name I denounce the fear the spirit of fear that came to me through trauma or inheritance I reverse the effects of the operation of fear in my life and I embrace the peace of God that passes all understanding right now I bind and destroy any demonic powers that are trying to take over my mind my thinking and my heart I dismantle them in the name of Jesus I declare that I am powerful I am filled with love and my Mind is sound in Jesus name. I refuse to accept and operate in fear in my life. I uproot it in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree no weapon formed against me will prosper in Jesus name. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit fall upon the enemy's camp that is trying to put fear in my life in Jesus name. In the name of Jesus, I lose my family and myself of the spirit of fear that is trying to paralyze me. I come against bad news, bad report or demonic words that will bring fear into my life. I destroy every single one in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of the fear of man, of people, and of my boss. I uproot that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. I cast it into the pit of hell where it belongs. Lord, I declare over my life that you are my shield and my protector in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, no matter what comes my way, I make a decision to trust in, in you in every area of my life. 
I declare and decree that if God is for me, who can be against me? I cover my family, my marriage, my ministry, and myself in the blood of Jesus Christ. I declare and decree and cover my mind and my sleep in the blood of my Savior, Jesus Christ. I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for releasing me from fear and for showering me with love. Lord God, for giving me a sound mind, for giving me power in Jesus' name. Going forward, we will do what we have to do, even though we may be doing it afraid. Okay, you do it afraid. And we stand in faith, we stand in love, we stand with power, and we stand with a sound mind. So, the final thing I want to say is that Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we say, you know, if this had happened, then that would have happened, but we don't really know. And so we have to surrender to God um, and the world where he says that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And so we have to believe that whatever happens in our lives, God allowed it because he can see the end from the beginning and he know that it's going to be okay anyway. And so, um, you know, sometimes we have regrets, but we can't stay there. We have to gather ourselves together and press forward and continue doing the things that we know that we are called to do. So I hope this helps somebody and that we can continue this journey on together as we... Uh, continue to become our authentic selves to the glory of God. God bless you and much love.